What's up everyone, welcome back to another video big clip on my YouTube channel and in this video I'm gonna continue showing the old school production tips and tricks and a general talk about it. First, before I continue, I just want to let everyone know that we organized the Sightrans production retreat that's going to take a place in Cambridge in the April this year. And if you would like to get more information about it, just visit www.cyprolab.com. It's going to be three and a half days long with the party on the end. It's uh, going to be me, Mario Sinner State and Laughing Buddha. So if you're interested about it and you would like to sign up, just follow the link below and you will be able to get all the information. As you already know, I've been into the complete research as again uh, this is happening to me several times like during my career I always try to follow the new music and every time I did this like following the new releases I came up to certain point where I really do not have uh, anything to listen that inspires me that doesn't have to do anything with the current scene today because I'm guessing that a lot of people actually love what's happening on the scene right now but for me it's kind of opposite so somehow the main thing is missing on the scene today or in the side trend scene today it's really for me it's really really hard to find something that inspires me and also I try to analyze what is that and if you ask me I was also the victim of the modern production style so the last 10 years I was chasing the sound I was uh, chasing the sound quality I wanted that uh, great big sound and after I achieved it I realized that it cost me a lot of my creativity so in general I need to work on my creativity right now and I realized that most of it and all artists that I speak about today like all major artists on the scene every time we talk about the music we come to the same topics these are the kick in the bass the phases the hi-hats this and that and nobody actually talks about creativity that much which i believe it's a huge huge crisis and just after realizing that i decided that i'm gonna try to ignore completely so as I already promised, for uh, younger or the people that are uh, watching this video and that are younger that do not know much of the kind of history and uh, the past or the music from 2001, 2004, which is for me the best. And so again, after every time I got lost into the new music and if, when I didn't manage to follow uh, what's going on and to find inspiration I always went back to these tracks that I used to listen and were, uh, which were the, the, the main reason why I started making music so always I keep that as the start point for regaining the inspiration and this album from Jyoti Shidu is one of the those tracks so I'm just gonna play it shortly but you will be able to find the link below to hear the whole track I don't want to play the whole track because I don't want to waste a lot of your time. So what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to create something similar to catch that emotion. And I just use this as a start point. So I'm trying to extract something like that. I try to create similar feeling in this track. So what I did first, I found a huge library of the old kicks. Basically, the kick is already sampled. If I turn off the LFO tool, you can clear, hear that click on the end. So what I did, I just created one fourth uh, rate over here. I turned off the volume over here to zero because by default it's on 100. So it's not ducking. Basically what it does, it just filtering the, the kick. So this, this is the moment where all the frequencies will be open and then it's gonna cut as the kick moves down to the lower frequencies. Of course, because of the filter, there's a certain phase shift, but I do not care that much, as I already said. I really want to cut all the technicalities when it comes to my music. I'm going to use that knowledge only to fix when it comes to the end, but I really want to get back on being creative and working on emotions and the atmospheres in my music. And I really want to inspire other people to do the same, as I honestly believe that all these technicalities are pretty, pretty uh, dangerous. And I believe that once we go into that zone, we need to choose what we are going to listen in a certain moment so we can listen to the track as itself we can listen to the story creativity the emotion whatsoever but we also can switch to the other mode and we're gonna listen like the levels like our oh, is the kick loud so if we go that path then it, our creativity is going to suffer definitely anyway so this is the first like, kick okay cleared out then i had a little bit of cutoff and that there was a well, the, the cut of the low frequencies and there also there was like a big punch on the mids I just wanted to make it a bit deeper. From the other side, I have the bass line. Bass line is uh, default saw. 
random on zero phases at the beginning. I don't want to have this click for this type of the music. Envelope, a little bit sustained down and a release is a little bit more open. And again, envelope on the filter. And as you can see, like the cutoff is a pretty open, but the click is not going all the way up. It's just going a little bit from that side. Then I have quadrophase, R bass and PJ979. As you can see, I don't have any EQ and the bassline sounds really nice. What is really important in this video is what I do not find anybody doing today. Maybe it does, but not that I'm aware of is that we all have like 60 notes and they are all the same length. When I listen to the music from 2001 and before, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of magic inside of the groove of the bass lines because they use like the different lengths of the notes. So what I try to do here, again, these are all A's, but one note is a bit longer than the other one. Then in that way, I try to create a different groove and I did that by listening to Silicon Sound, by listening to Orion, by listening to Jyoti Shidu. So all of these guys in the past, they used to use like different lengths of the note. And while you listen, you can confuse it like there's a transpose, but there's not a transpose, there's just a different length of the note. So. I was going through the bunch of the loops, some really old samples. Uh, this is from Vengeance, uh, the first pack of the Vengeance, as I believe so. Uh, it's a Vengeance club sound, something like this. So this loop, I need to play with the original, what I did. This is the 103, okay. So this is the original version of that loop. So it sounds like this. So what I did, I tried to transpose it so it does sound a bit deeper. And I did uh, set here drums, okay. So I did transpose it to minus 24. I did remove a lot of lows and then I set to like Volcano. Uh, I think I first I did Bernier Saturn. I use Saturn 2 with a broken tube. And then what I did, I insert Volcano, Volcano 3 from Fav Filter. I chose Clean over here and then I created the envelope generator and I connected it to the cutoff. So every time Volcano realized there's a hit on the uh, on the audio file, it's going to do something and it's going to modulate the frequency of the filter. So I did something like this, right? So. Or maybe like... Okay, then I bounced it and then again, I did transpose it even more to minus three. So it's like minus 27 semi notes and... And what I did also, I tried to make it a bit stereo. So I compressed only what's in the middle, pretty hard without it. So it's more mono. This is like a little bit more stereo. And that way I'm gonna try to push the dynamics on the side while in the middle, I already have the kick and bass, which is pretty much. The second loop. Also from the same folder. Okay, this is with all the other ones. Again, okay. Then I use the stylus. Stylus is really old and one of my favorite drum machines. But in this, I just use the, the hi-hats. I created uh, the hi-hat loop. Not this one, this one. So from 9 to 9. And also what I did, I did find one of the loops. It's really hard to find them right now, but I think it was from the swing. So somewhere here was like, yeah, something like this. Because in this time, uh, people needed to use a lot of loops because there was no that much samples and it was really hard to create all the layers for the drums. And I honestly believe that using the loops, especially this uh, breakbeat or sampled loops from, from 60s, 70s, they really, really have something really special sounding on, on them. And then I put like a little bit of delay on it. So I created something like this. So all together is like and, 
And then I found like from Thomas Penton, these are one of my really favorites, like old sample libraries, really quality samples. So Thomas Penton, there's one, two, and three. I have all three of them. So there's a drum loop. I just needed to remove the swing from it because it was pretty much in the swing zone and all together sounds now like And I want to extract some from Omnisphere again. Omnisphere, right, to create this warm, this deep feeling. And I will try to find human noises if that uh, category still exists in Omnisphere. Human, human voices? No, human noises. Human noise? Uh, I don't think there's. It did exist in the atmosphere and the first version of Omnisphere. But let's see noisecapes. I will definitely try to find. I always, as you know, this can be. Good. So I will try to use it like to be sequenced as in a loop, like uh, the same as it is in the Jyoti's track. And Jyoti is, by the way, is in Belgrade, so most likely tomorrow I might be working on this track with him. I'm gonna try to convince him to maybe record the session, but I cannot promise. Okay. A bit shorter, I think it's gonna sound. I used to boost a lot on 1K always, like there's something in 1K which I really, it kind of increased the atmosphere of the, of the sample and especially for this kind of the single shot sounds that are going in this position, I really used to like, like if you like old school E-clip like from 2010, then this was one of the tricks, like every sound used to have a boost on 1K. I do it still today, but I do it more in the lower mids, but yeah, I do remember I was always boosting 1K. Okay. So the, the atmosphere that, that I'm getting is basically I'm extracting the same emotion from Jyoti's track. And again, after I played this sound over here, I already got some kind of a di di different vibe. But it's a really powerful technique if you ask me to use a certain track as an inspiration, something that really works on you. But when I say works on you, I don't think, I, I don't mean on how it's going to affect on your career. So not by mind. I honestly believe that coming up from the heart is something that's really missing today on the scene. And the whole game or the whole business structure or the how we all managing our careers is really affecting on our creative life as well. So after you reach a certain point, there's a certain expectations you need to uh, try to keep on that level. And then you are trying to make uh, what's popular, what's modern. People are analyzing why some other artist has a success. They try to do the same thing, but it's all coming from the mind more than it's coming from the heart. And I'm not sure this is a universal uh, conclusion, but in my case, all the tracks that I did without turning on my brain were always success. And I wanted to make a video to try to explain to, to everyone what is 
the best formula to create a successful track. And that's definitely, in my opinion, is turning off your brain. Do not thinking and just going with the flow, playing with the different sounds. Wow, it sounds really nice. Oh. This one sounds really retro, retro, in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm in my videos doing a lot of a lot of uh, theory, but this is the only way when I'm really gonna try when I'm trying to explain what is the essence, what is the key, and I always try to share with you some of the new some of the new conclusions that I get also, and I and I'm trying to keep you in in a track of what I believe is going to be next thing. So I honestly believe that that I will be able to bring back this kind of old school emotion into the music, which I believe is really, really missing. So anyway. Here I would find even one more loop, so I will just go. No. So this is Thomas Penton. This might sound good. Yeah. So just double click inside of it. I'm gonna open it and I'm gonna try to see if it has the, yeah, it does have the, the swing is already in. So yeah, threshold intensity. Yeah, something like this. All right, but it does not do it really well. I will need to move all these hit points. So they, yeah, like this one right here, like this one, this one. Okay, good, good, good. And then I'm just gonna slice it, create slice, okay. And now I have it and then I just need to press Q. So it's going to be quantized. And another thing I might do is instead of using limiter and compressor and everything, I'm going to select all these loud, loudest ones and I'm just going to move them manually down. So I'm going to try to find like some kind of equal. But transients are pretty loud, so I really love to burn out the transients from. This might, this might be a bit too much. Let me just try to increase dynamics. Okay. And then straight after, because of distortion, it brings back a little bit of the low frequencies. So this is why this trick is really good only for the hi-hat. Uh, it's amazing sample, but it does make the track more happy 
and I think it's pull, it pulling it's pulling it out from the main emotion because I don't think retro 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 underground. Let's try. So on, so on. So I'm gonna try to keep that emotion from from that period. It's kind of tacky. It's kind of deep, darker. But there's really something special inside of it. And yeah, I hope that you like this video and see you soon with another video. Again, if you want to learn more, visit my website. There's a lot of courses, and most of them are gonna and a lot of them are gonna come soon as well. So thank you very much for watching and see you soon with another video. Bye.